Has anyone had anything good happen to them? Uh, any any crazy? Uh, that's a really sad silence. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, what I was hoping for. Is that right? No, but um, so yeah, I'd, I'm proud to announce that um, you know, I'm. Uh, of course, you guys know. For those of you who don't know, you know, I'm I'm 30. I I used to uh, screw around a lot, and I'm I'm you know now I don't. I, it's not. It's finally hitting me that you know finally, I'm, a. Went from being, you know, just this fuck around party guy to now like being a father figure. Oh my god, Kelly's ra- pregnant. Raising family. Uh, no, no. Oh. I, I was gonna. Uh, <laughs> the thing I'm proud of is, so I'm trying to. Y- the the point is, you know, I'm like I'm trying to go and do everything along the right route. I'm raising a family, owning a house, trying to sort of build this life for myself. And in the same week, I'm proud to announce that I've been legally. Uh, well, on paper, uh, accused of shooting up my workplace and and murdering someone. That is exciting. Oh, two, twi- twice in the w- same week. That sounds so, like you've so, really so got so things I feel like put I'm together. A man, you know? Yeah, that's good. No, right? you're making a lot of progress. It yeah, sounds like right? that's good. So <laughs> yeah, I, uh, can you elaborate on that? Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so here's um, at work. Uh, you know, the thi- I'm, I'm sure everyone knows it sucks because it's different bequ- between, like, the friends that you have outside of work and at work. You know, the people at work are sort of like, okay, I'll be friends with you because you're the piece of shit I got to deal with for eight hours. Sure. It's not really somebody you'd spend the rest of your life with or whatever. But um, so it all start. Well, so Unless I'll, I'll start off with the, the ac- right accusation. Right I, got, I got taken into a interrogation room with my boss and like a CEO of the company. Most companies have those interrogation rooms, yeah? Yeah. And and they're like, uh, well, Phil, do you have anything to say to us? I'm like, I I don't know. I It's Friday. I'm going to a concert, feeling kind of good. Don't really want to be in this interrogation room. And they're like, well, do you think there's anything that you said that might have been a sexual comment? <laughs> or, and uh, that's, we're, that's, that's, uh, you know, issue A. That's issue A. And is d- there anything? And I'm like, well, what are you talking about? And ha- have I told you about? Uh, I've told you about the uh, the Kate version of my work, the Meredith. Yes. Yeah. You've mentioned to me. I don't know if these gentlemen have had the pleasure. Yeah. There's this uh, chick I work with who she kind of she I think she's like 20, but she looks and uh, and and she literally looks exactly like Meredith from The Office, and her name's Meredith. She like that cottage cheese skin, and <laughs> and uh, just just red when it's cold. Like uh, any, anyways, she is this uh, really hipster chick. She gets really uh, mad at me when I get things wrong because I tend to be clueless in most situations. So she was like getting mad at me for uh, I was calling her viola, a violin, and then like once I realized she was getting mad at it, I'd just be like, oh yeah. So how's those saxophone lessons going? Oh, how's those clarinet lessons going? You know, just kind of mess with her. So. And I kept asking my buddy who goes hunting the uh, the gun nut, like, "Are you sure everything's okay?" Because she's got a crush on him. It's like, "Oh yeah, she's hu- he's." Wait she's a minute. Hum- the the hipster girl has a crush on the on the, the alt right guy. Yeah. Well, it's alt right and alt left getting back together. You know, that's, that's, it doesn't that's make any like a sense. Terrifying to me. marriage. Yeah, yeah. I, I I I sometimes I feel like they're both uh, trying to get information out of each other. You know, <laughs> playing the long con. But uh, uh opposites attract. Yeah. So so what happened is she had a um pin on I, I it was two people who reported me. There's this Josh kid who you made the sexual comment to? Well, uh, sort of. I wouldn't say directly to him because he's like he's the guy who walks like a giraffe and his tits hang down to his belt, but he's very cute. He's no, he's not cute. Oh. He uh <laughs> his he looks like he just fell through like a barrel of hot wax like his just balding and i don't it's i don't know and then his tits flabbing down and he's like really desperately trying to be friends with me and as be i've I've been nice to him to this point and uh, we were having a conversation and as usual uh this other worker interrupted our conversation she interrupts every conversation it's like being with gavin i'd never seen it before like like i'm talking to you guys right now and it'd just be like oh hey where's the cheese oh what about the crackers just ran like just random shit. I'd be talking about like, oh hey Joe, the gun. I'm like, hey man. Uh, so how do I go about going hunting with you? Oh look at my tortilla. It looks like a face. Ha ha ha. 
I'm like, <laughs> shut the fuck up. Like, it's not even close to being work-related and definitely further away from being funny or, or you know, pertaining to this conversation. But you sexually harassed her. Yeah, she... Um, I would just keep busting her balls. Like, um, one of the things that... The main thing that made her snap was one day... It was, it was the Friday. Um, she kept interrupting everybody and... Uh, I was like, all right, hey, guys, who's getting fucked up this weekend? They're like, well, we all are. I'm like, no, who's getting fucked up right now? Because shots on me. We're going to take a shot every time Meredith interrupts us. But be careful because we might get alcohol poisoning. And she just, like, lost it. She got really offended by that. Um, but the thing, so she's like, oh, well, what leverage do I have here? What can you not do at work? Race, sexually, like, you know, explicit, or threat. So uh, she had a pin of, I think, what's her name? Frito Kylie? The oh, Frida Kahlo. I have, do you know who this is, John? No, I don't know. Oh, you got to bend the mic. Wait. It's the butthole mic, man. It, it doesn't work. Though. Yeah, I don't know who she is. Yeah. Well, I don't, I don't know either, and I don't know why the hell I would ever fucking hear of her. Like, she's, she's a Spanish painter and is like huge in the like feminist movement. So like oh. she's like a, a big like feminist sim- symbol. Okay. And, and she had a rowdy love affair with Lev Trotsky. Of okay. The Bolshevik Revolution. Okay. Well, that's a better explanation than she gave me because all she said was, "Oh, hey, she really uh was a, an amazing painter in the communist movement and she really wanted to get her paint out there." She couldn't promote it because of all these dictators holding it back and, and sort of suppressing the art world. So she fucked all these guys to get to the top. I'm like, well, that kind of sounds like a whore to me, not a painter. And that apparently is sexual harassment, calling a painter a whore. And on a quick side note, I don't know if this is true or Sandry, if you know, but it was my understanding that Frida Kahlo was very, very sickly. And I don't know if she had polio, but I think like, she was wheelchair bound for a lot of her life. And I have heard of her reputation as being a bit of a philanderer, like sleeping around. Yeah. And just like the physical description I hear of her doesn't match with that, you know, like sexually liberated, like cougar, what have you. Yeah. Um, so I, that's always been my confusion. So do you have any insights, Sandry? Um, I, I can't say much to that. I've I've heard the same things, but I don't have any, you know, I don't have any real evidence to back that up. I haven't looked a ton into it, it, Frida Kahlo. It, it, it sounds to me like, oh, this person's cool now, so everyone's going to like her, but we don't really know about her. Kind of like the way you described nihilism, that one episode. <laughs> Nobody really knows the definition. <laughs> yeah, but it's just we're all like, into it. But yeah. but the, you know the funniest part about nihilism though is not knowing the definition is kind of the definition of nihilism. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. Think about that. The food that. for thought. Yeah, no kidding. So anyway, so, you call so Frida Kahlo a whore. Yeah, and that's considered, I guess, sexual harassment for using the word whore, because the way she made it seem is that I called her a whore for um, wearing the pin, which I would not have done that i mean but she was trying to look for blow and fuck everyone on during the work party so either way that accusation might have been true but i didn't say it but i know that it 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 could have worked out either way is what i'm trying to say but i did not call her or anyways the next thing was so so you explain all this to the nice people in the interrogation room like no no i wasn't calling her a whore i was calling frida kahlo a whore yeah no that's that's really how it went okay and then and then they're like all right we got that part over. Now we're going to go to the more <laughs> concerning issue, which is issue B. Have you ever mentioned that you're going to bring a gun to work and shoot up the place? And of I'm course like, I have. <laughs> well, it was my water pistol. It was going to be filled with non-toxic Tabasco. Right. You know? like, do you work here? Of course I want to shoot everyone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. well, I was like, no, I, I don't know why anybody would ever say that because... And, I, and the, one, the two things that I remembered, one... I went up to Josh one day and I was like, how's your day going? He goes, oh, it's okay. I go, oh, okay. Because you look pretty stressed out. You never go in here and I'm like, fuck, man, I just hate everyone. Which I guess is signaling that I'm going to shoot up the place. And then, and then pretty much for two hours, for the rest of that whole interrogation, they're just like, you sure, Phil? You don't need the suicide hotline. We actually have an employee stress hotline that we're going to email you. Even if, even if you're not stressed out. Do you have all right, all right, Phil. Let, let's just backtrack. You're a family man, right? You're, you're happy here. You wear, you wear bright colors usually, right? 
so you're not going to shoot us up, right? You know, I'm like, no, dude, like this whole fucking thing. Like I was talking, I was talking to the gun nut about going hunting. Did you refer to him as the gun nut? No, no. They're like, oh, sure. We love that crazy son of a bitch. (laughs) Yeah. Like I, well, no, I I don't want to use his name. If if he's a gun nut. I've I've heard about uh, him on the uh, previously. It seems like they should be more, more concerned with, with his actions than uh, anything you're going to do. Well, yeah, well, I mean, I don't know, man. It's just, it was fucking ridiculous. I can't believe, like, people, not to mention, everybody's talking about that Florida shit right now, you know? Well, yeah, it's a, it's definitely a hot topic. Like, it, 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 show, it shows you how much media can affect that, you know? I mean, I, I don't know. So so that's what I'm proud of, that I've, yeah. You don't think that it was that uh, metalhead guy? No, no, it wasn't. No, it definitely was because I don't even I don't see him every single day. I know I know for sure it was her because I'm friends with everybody else in my row, and I'm like, they were like, "Oh, you were gone for two, three hours. Where were you? Did you have an episode?" Because I get stressed out, and they thought I either had a panic attack or a seizure. I'm like, you know, I didn't want to. You're not supposed to mention it because it's the boss. I'm like, oh no, I had a messed up car battery. Oh, that's funny because Meredith turned around and she's like, "He's had a meeting. Don't worry, we'll see if he's back." Like, oh, okay. So this little brat slacktivist wants to fucking, like, ruin someone's life because, I don't know. Because you insulted her favorite artist. Yep. I think that's what it, I don't know. It's it, Well, the thing is, every day I'm just busting balls, and then I'll ask, hey. I even asked her a few times. I'm like, hey, if I'm too mean, let me know. Because oftentimes I offend people, and they don't let me know. And I'm, not, I'm, I'm harmless. Like, I, I won't be offended. Like, just tell me to my face, you're being a dickhead. Shut up. And she's like, no, 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 it's fine, it's fine. So I just every day kept con- one one week she fucking thought she could get to work on two dollars of gas. So she gets to work, then goes out to lunch, breaks down like the first fucking two feet, and has nobody to help her push the car. So of course her love, the gun nut, helps her out. Then she then she doesn't mention to anybody that half the gas that she bought. You know, like say she bought, I don't know, five dollars of gas to fill up to come back to work. About three dollars of it spilled on her clothes. So we're all getting a headache in our fucking cubicle row because, you know, she smells like you could flick a fucking match. And right there, you got a Buddhist protest, you know, Tiananmen Square. <laughs> so I don't know, man. But so, yeah. So that, and then I would bust about because like we had fajita day, employee appreciation. So I was Aww. like, yeah, I think since you're new, Meredith, you should pick it, pick it up. You know, uh, but make sure you have a full tank, and and even when you bring them back, I'll let you prance around with your viola. You know, like just shit like that. I don't know. I don't think it's too mean or a, or or threat. How does how does prancing around with your viola bring up bringing a gun to work? You know what I mean? I'm not getting any of this. You know, that's just the white collar world. Yeah, you know? seems like a pretty hefty accusation. Yeah. Well, you know what really sucks is what my company told me. They're like, unfortunately here, you're guilty until proven innocent. So technically, I could I could, I could, could accuse anybody of that. I could just, Meredith has a bazooka in her backpack. It's a vegan bazooka, but she's going to shoot it up, you know. Don't do that. No, no, I definitely <laughs> won't. <laughs> yeah, I would, I would avoid page. doing that, yeah. No, no, I definitely won't do that. I, 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 I wouldn't even, I mean... I don't know. I think I'm changing in the way, like, uh, I do think before I speak recently, and, and I'm not trying to ruin anybody's life, so I don't think a fucking comment should uh, fuck up somebody's financial status. I don't know. Wait, it, say that again? You don't think a comment should, like, as in, as in, as in if like somebody they lose sa- their job? Yeah, yeah, like like if somebody is being a, a, you know, a nuisance at work, they shouldn't be messing up their financial life because you know it's what i'm saying is if somebody bothers you why don't you just approach them and let them know you know why don't you just or just avoid that person i don't know how you guys feel yeah i don't know i'm with you you guys ever had any situation like that before not really no i have not you mean you guys haven't been accused of shooting up the place (laughs) i uh I got in trouble once in middle school for writing uh, emo poetry. It was all satire. Yeah. But one of them was called, like, Graveyard Crying. And everyone in my English class at the time was gathering around reading it. We were all laughing. Yeah. 
the teacher comes up. She's like, oh, what are you guys laughing about? And we're like, nothing, Miss Sebo. Don't worry about it, Miss Sebo. And she says, no, I can take a joke. And so I let her read this poem, which is all about, like, slitting your wrist and, like, hating your parents and everything. And I wrote it completely as a joke. She was it reads beautiful? It. I, I thought it was really powerful stuff. Um, Do you still remember it? No. No, I wish. Um, it was just in, like, a spiral-bound notebook. It was great. Everyone, I was the hero of class. Miss Sebo reads it, and she puts it down. She looks at me, and she says, Bill, this is sick. And I was like, uh, uh, no, it's a joke. And she's like, no, this is not funny. This is sick. And I was like, okay, sorry, Miss Sebo. It was a middle school? <laughs> yeah. So the next day in homeroom, Mr. Miller, my homeroom teacher, is like, Bill, can I see you in the hallway, please? And I was like, oh, great. And he's like, gets down on like one knee, like, hey, sport, how's it going? How are things at home? <laughs> and I was like, did Miss fucking Sebo talk to you? And he's like, I can't say that. And I was like, Mr. Miller, it was a joke that she didn't understand. Like, I'm completely fine. And he looks at me, he's like, you're sure? And I was like, yeah, I'm sure. I don't talk to strangers. <laughs> right? And he was like, well, okay. And like, that was the end of it. Yeah. So now, like, uh, just for everyone out there and everyone here at the table, like, don't tell Mrs. Sebo any jokes because she doesn't get it. Yeah, she doesn't. Yeah. What the fuck, man? You know, in uh, in high school, I was pretty extensively bullied, and at one oh. point, I <laughs> sorry, wow, that a little bit of a downer, but at one point, um, you shut up the school. There was no they, but there there was a joke that that I wasn't really in on or or a fan of, but they <laughs> they you know every year for the yearbook you had like most likely to sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. And a bunch of people said that I was most likely to shoot up the school, mm-hmm. just because of the, how they had like, that in your yearbook. No, 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 no. Like as a as a joke oh. outside of that. Like I heard people like saying that shit just oh, because like <laughs> that because they recognized how extensively bullied I was and yeah. that I w- that like they assumed that I wished them harm, which like. In a weird way, I do like like I want to the, like day. illness to befall some of them, but like I'm not gonna go shoot anybody. Yeah. Well, now you're just lacking motivation. <laughs> I'll t- I'll t- I'm, I'm, gl- I'm I'm glad to be a uh, uh, an underachiever on that but end uh, of the results, spectrum. Sandry, dream it and then be it. Well, at least you're not piss bottle Phil or the biscuit bandit. You know. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. The bottle and the bus, Phil. Ha 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 the uh, fuck man in uh my high school yearbook they did superlatives you know like most likely like best dressed shit yeah. like that and one of them was most likely to be late to graduation and the joke that was going around high school was that Paige was going to be most likely to be late for graduation because a little background information Paige had died in a drunk driving incident a few months prior oh so <laughs> Talk about wow. like dark shit, yeah. Yeah, kids. That's, the kids are assholes. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty fucking dark. That's uh, Hillary Accurate. Clinton's high school. Oh. So that's yeah. you know that's the sort of caliber of that sounds uh, like something she'd say. <laughs> that is just the wit has stayed with the school. Yeah, even since her time. But it sounds like things are going really well for you at work. Yeah, man. So life is good in general. Things. Um. Well, the the thing that was more awkward is Friday. We had a whirly ball party for the whole company. Nice. And I am usually the guy who drives uh, a lot of the people. There's uh, th- And this guy, James, we went together to Josh's to smoke up the Josh Flabby Tits. And he, um, that whole, like after that whole incident, all of Friday, I kept, J- like James was like the middleman. And he's like, so you going to, you going to whirly ball today? Like, yeah, I don't know, man. Um, you want to come with? It's like, yeah, I was going to go ask Josh. And James isn't aware of any of this. I'm like, yeah, ask him if he wants to come. If he wants me to go back to where he lives and know where he lives. <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's, sure, he's like, yeah. oh, Josh said he's not going. I'm like, oh, that's... And then, like, I pass by Josh on the way to the bathroom. And I'm just, like, staring at his eyes, smiling all nice. And he's, like, desperately trying to avoid me. You could see, like, he's actually sweating. at the. I'm like, oh, yeah, how's it going, Josh? And instead of saying, like, oh, it's okay, you know, nice day, are you going to the whirly ball thing? I'm kind of on the fence. I might go, you need a ride? No, I, I'm, I'm on the fence too, man. S- same boat, you know? And, like, all day I just kept going back and forth. All right, James, tell Josh that I am going, and I'm giving you guys a ride. And then, be- and then Josh, oh, yeah, no, I don't think I'm going anymore. 
and just back and forth. So I think they thought I was going to go, but then I ended up going to Chinese food night mm. with Kelly's parents. But yeah, I feel like uh, whirly ball is is an activity that that they don't want to do that they just accused of uh, yeah, wanting to yeah, yeah right the, like not the not the game to to go do after that yeah head. right what the f- play some laser tag get them in the dark right <laughs> oh yeah don't <laughs> don't invite him to laser tag right <laughs> oh that's Phil don't talk to him uh, yeah dude paintballing right sh- <laughs> no that that should ask before anybody got any marbles <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That shit was so ridiculous. I don't know. But um, I ended up going to see that show, uh, Watain, right here. This poster right here. Uh, I, I tried inviting um, John. You said you didn't really like him. Yeah, I wasn't a uh, fan. I mean, I listened to like f- four or five of their songs. So. Do, you know, do you know what songs? I typed it in YouTube in like the first first few songs that popped up. Yeah. So I don't remember the names though. Will you sing them for us? Oh, man. Was it was it a video with them covered in black and blood and in the woods? I didn't watch the video. That I plugged it into my. Down, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's all of them. <laughs> yeah, that's their greatest hits album. Yep. No, it, it well, it ended, it ended up. I'm not kidding. It ended up being like the nuttiest fucking show I ever went to. I literally like almost had an anxiety attack because I I may have started to get food poison. I actually I think I got the food poisoning from the blood. Because yeah, they were. Because 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 I, I, dude, I I used a Q-tip that night, and there was blood in my ear from yeah. The, at the show, they um they s- were setting up the stage, and they um, imp- they had like lamb's heads, you know, from the deli, impaled on like five different crosses that were welded upside down on the stage, and real lamb's heads. Yeah, real lamb's heads. <laughs> it, there were people trying to. One of them was like. Yeah, the whole time just one tongue hanging out, and everybody kept trying to crowd surf and rip it out. Because literally, if you land, if you landed on the stage, you'd get impaled on one of the like metal things. Because there, yeah, the, all the security were like, as soon there was maybe like one or two people that tried crowd surfing, and it was just like some really obese metalhead trying to be funny, like, oh, these guys are gonna hold me up, huh? And they didn't make it. They, they we wouldn't be able to lift them up to get impaled on. But, anyways. I uh I took my phone out and I'm like trying to record it. and right when I try to record he filled up a skull full of like pigs or cows blood threw it right at me like all over my face all over it. I could I could show you pictures later but I was comp- the whole front row was completely covered in blood cuz they did it like five different times and it smells like steak and you like kind of makes your eyes itch you know <laughs> <laughs> sure and yeah, it was uh, it was really n- the 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 mosh pit was super fucking nuts. Like there were just people. There was one guy that I saw the week before when Ross took me to a show for free, uh, Enslaved and Wolves of the Throne Room, where it, it, it's it's this little Mexican guy. He's like four feet tall, and he just runs up to everyone with his rings and goes "Satanico" and grabs them by the throat, and everybody's like, "Get the fuck away from!" But he is. He was like the strongest fucking guy in there. He's like, "Am I in the wrong place? What the fuck? 2018 is pussies." Like, <laughs> and yeah, I got my face thrown into the back of some guy's head. My face was swollen and I couldn't talk. Right. We ended up meeting the band. The drummer was really nice, you know. So how was our show? Was it was it too loud? Uh huh. And where where was it? Metro. Metro. Yeah. You think they'll be allowed back? I don't. I don't know. It's weird because Antifa goes after them every fucking year, and they played uh, the, the last time they were here. They played Reggie's, and speaking of that, a band that I was going to see in two weeks, Take, which is from Sweden, which is one of the main like mayhem bands, they got fucking banned. They canceled their whole fucking tour. Antifa protested Bottom Lodge. I'm not going to get into that shit because that's fucking ridiculous. But the, the long story short of that was that. Uh, like I said before, none of these, ba- I, you know, none of them are into politics or anything. When they played Germany, the band Take, they painted a swastika on their chest because it's illegal to do that in Germany. So they're kind of like fucking with them. When they interviewed them, they're like, oh, why are you guys doing this? Are you guys fucking Nazis? And we're like, no, why? we have sold out shows in Israel. Why aren't we doing that there? Because we're kind of like going to, you know, Germany and fucking with them because, oh, this is illegal here. We'll do this here. I don't know. It'd be like going to America and wiping your ass with a flag like Marilyn Manson did, you know? 
So yeah, they got their whole fucking tour got canceled. I I was so pissed because because I'm like, I mean. Who can say that that has happened to? Oh, I got tickets for this band. I can't see them because of some protest, you know? That, like, rarely... That's, like, some 60s shit, you know? Yeah, that's a pretty touchy move, though, to to, to put swastikas on your chest yeah. and, and go to I, Germany. Yeah, like, yeah, I get... Questionable I get judgment. That, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, I know I would never do that shit. I know I don't... I would not want him to do that shit at the show. But it's like, man... I want to. I want if if you don't like the show, then just don't go. I mean, that's just I don't know. That's just the way I see it. It's like I don't know. I could be offended by I don't. You, you hear about how like it's like white people getting beat up at Black Panther shows. I think it's maybe a rumor because they're wearing dashikis to the show. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> um, the movie? Yeah. I didn't hear about that. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah I, I, the, I there there was a bunch that. of times where um I guess there was a. Although, the, again, d- <laughs> questionable judgment of a, a white dude wearing a dashiki to uh, anywhere at any time. I, I wore one to work. But that's <laughs> cool. Yeah. But I didn't know it was like an African tribal thing. I, 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 I literally I literally wore it because uh, when I was in like my psych band, I thought, I'm like, oh, fuck, that's a really cool trippy design. And I bought one. And then I just wore it to work. And, yeah, a lot of, a lot of people were staring at me like, what the fuck is this guy doing, you know? But I didn't know it was like, uh, I didn't know it was like, no, this is our shit. You can't wear this. I don't know. I, I think that's kind of stupid, you know, like wear whatever the fuck you want. I don't know. I, I don't know how you guys feel about that. It, it, I think it depends. Like, yeah, like I, I agree that sometimes like the idea of like appropriation goes a little bit too far, like because you create the idea of us and them when you when you have like certain things that can only be specifically used. By, yeah. You know, like a certain selection of people however je- like wearing a wearing a dashiki it depends you have to be seriously wearing a dashiki you can't like you can't have it as some sort of like joke or statement because then like that it, i think it's it kind of touchy there yeah All right so wearing it to the movie theaters for black panther yeah questionable judgment no it was just people like uh it's people like Meredith, like some activists trying to be like, yeah, I'm with you guys, and I'm like going to help you guys out by protest- by wearing a dashiki to Black Panther or something. I don't know. I I think it could be kind of patronizing. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. but I wouldn't do it. Yeah. I don't really, I guess I don't I'm really not, have no, that I'm much of a problem with again. it. You want, we want, you want mine? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, that, that's okay. I I don't need a dashiki. I only wear it around the house with the blinds closed and <laughs> pretend I have my own Black Panther crew here. But yeah, so so that's what happened at <laughs> Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, we got covered in blood. Then we ended up meeting the band. The singer was obviously a very pissed off and very dedicated Satanist. Can I take a picture with you? Uh, I guess you know. <laughs> So, but uh, the drummer was really cool, but um, sorry, he's such a grump. I don't know. He's just <laughs> he never likes our fans. <coughs> I tell him to get it out by throwing more blood, but it's never enough. They actually had a guy come like uh, like like you know when you go on tour, you got like oh the guys who you know connect all the chords and then the guys who like break down the drum set they yeah. actually had a guy who just mops the blood up <laughs> <laughs> Not even. what is that job description <laughs> yeah but it, because um um when we were waiting to meet the band they have uh it's called a trident i think it's also the symbol for pisces it's like it's just like uh yeah. i know what you're talking about like yeah that. it's a pitchfork with a circle on the handle and they have that where they hang their like band logo on and I wanted to take a picture with it while they were carrying everything out. And um, <laughs> they just, they had this fucking like cart that looked like it was from Pilgrim times. Just, oh, oh yeah, because all around the drum set, they have all these spines and ribs of animals around it. Uh, so they just threw all these in this into this Pilgrim cart along with the lamb's heads. And I'm like, man, why the fuck didn't you throw the heads into out into the crowd? That's going to rot in one night, you know? That, but Seems like that kind of is the theme they're going for though yeah it's just like rotting flesh yeah but point is yeah i'm like yeah i i'm taking a break from this shit because uh this is kind of fucked up i never <laughs> yeah it was uh, crazy uh, there's just one point in the pit where i'm like recording i'm like wait a minute i'm this is who i am at 30 years old i'm getting 
blood sprayed on me watching animals get ripped apart and fucking moshing with these people who you know got a head growing out of their neck like who are who are still in high school mentally you know i'm like what the fuck am i doing here so i gotta take that i gotta take a break from that have you told ross i haven't and that's that's the part that i was trying to get like it's gonna be stressful (laughs) 